right, all right, all right. Um, see how we're looking over there, Mr. Benny. We are live. Might have to refresh. No, we are live. We are live. Okay. Refresh the computer. Let's see if we got the picture going. We got high technology going on right here. High technology. There. Hey, How's you, it looking? We in? You are live. We are live. All right. This is a little different format tonight. We're uh, doing this uh, outside of Zoom. We're doing this person to person, which is pretty cool. Um, we'll get these microphones adjusted over here. Tonight we are here with Mr. Benny Montalbano of Elite Painting Plus. What's uh, up? What's up? He, uh, Benny was the first guest on this show. When we first came up with this idea to uh, do a, uh, a live podcast-ish type show. Um, and he was the first guest. And that was 26 episodes ago. So uh, we're back here tonight to revisit Benny and uh, see how he's been in the last uh, 26 weeks and uh, what's going on with his business and his world. And we want to talk a little bit about um, real estate and uh, painting and how it ties together. Um, basically, um, painting is a big part of real estate, obviously. Uh, curb appeal is everything on a home. Um, neat and clean sells. Benny leaves his houses neat and clean, and it makes them easy to sell. We've done a lot of uh, uh, work together on a lot of properties, and um, it's really been... A beneficial thing. So Benny's over here just sharing out to the groups so that everyone will be able to see it. Uh, so as soon as Benny's done sharing here, we'll uh, we'll jump on and we'll see what he's up to. I got my uh, arm brace on here tonight. I've been suffering from uh, a shoulder injury. It's uh, an old injury that I've been irritating and it's been killing me. And this uh, my wee ride at dawn that goes on every day uh, has kind of beaten me up. We're 301 days in a row of 10 plus miles a day on the bike with our live message every day so if you guys uh don't know about that follow me on my facebook page and also my group we ride at dawn 365 and uh you can see my messages of the day also on youtube uh brian lewis realtor on youtube you can catch every episode past episode of get some fire live and you can also get my daily inspiration messages on there all right, we're done sharing, Benny? We are, yep, yep. All right, all right. All right, Benny, so welcome back to the show. Uh, this is uh, this is an idea that a brainchild we had, me and Sam had way back in the day, and uh, 20, that's about, yeah, probably more than 26 weeks ago, that's when we started. We were down in Texas sitting in a cigar lounge and said, let's see what we can do to uh, give back a little bit and to uh, give some inspiration to our friends out there in Facebook land and to uh, highlight our friends businesses and journeys and um sam uh schedule is really crazy so he hasn't he wasn't able to continue going on live every monday night so i took the reins and uh here we are so we got benny back benny's a was our first person on the show and uh now we're revisiting uh what the show's turned into and what's going on in benny's life benny's been uh killing it in uh, in the painting world building his business up but also in life in general uh on the uh this journey will roll on to try and better ourselves and better our community, better our families, um, self-improvement, self-development, um, just trying to make ourselves the best version of ourselves. And um, so that's why we're here. Excellent, uh, Brian. Thanks for having me back. What'd you say? It was 26? I think it's 26, I believe. Wow. Wow. 26 weeks. It's a, big, it's a long journey. Yeah, it's been a long time. Excellent. So. Excellent. I'm, I'm glad to be back on. Um, wow. Wow. Uh, I watch pretty much all your lives, so it's so pretty interesting things that you do, um, and I'm honored to be back on and share a little bit of uh, painting and real estate uh, tips and uh, what painting really does for the real estate uh, market um, and for agents that are trying to sell a house. Definitely. Uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a big thing, so you know, kudos to you guys, because you're the ones that are bringing us in to make the houses look uh, amazing for you know the potential uh, buyer and uh, the new buyers too. That's you know they buy their house obviously. Yep. Let's start from the beginning. So, um, what got you into painting? Let's start right from day one. Give us a little crash course and what is elite painting and how long has it been around and um, what gave you the idea to start your own painting. Business? So. Um, my background comes from the um, maintenance field. 
Uh, I've been working in the school uh, systems for 25 years of my life. Um, and <clears throat> when I found out that we were going to have our first baby, I was like, you know, I, I, I need to do something else. Uh, I, I needed a, a little side hustle. You know that feeling? So, <laughs> so I, I, I basically started to promote myself in the school with administrators and uh, teachers and things like that. And I had uh, the opportunity to be able to paint people's homes after work. Um, you know, having a little bit of uh, a little bit of trade in everything, electrical, plumbing, um, carpentry, and obviously taping, spackling, sheetrock repair, uh, and just painting for some reason just just stuck with me. I just love the finish end of cleaning somebody's house up. Yeah, make it look new again. Absolutely, um, and you know, I think that that was the time that Facebook just came out. So it was easy for me to, uh, me being a tech guy, uh, I love technology. I was basically on uh, promoting myself uh, before and after pictures when that was like, a, I mean, it still is, but I, I think that was like the big uh, before and afters. HGTV before it was HGTV. <laughs> I, I think it was just, I, I think yeah, HGTV was, was just yeah. there, but yeah, it was, there. It was you know, version, you, you're taking, you're taking ideas from them, right? Yeah. And you're, you're bringing it into uh, your own. Uh, network um, and from that point uh, we just I just got really successful so I, wor I was working with somebody uh, one of my uh, partners at the job and you know one thing led to the other and we just started getting really busy um, and at that moment it was I was doing a little bit of everything and it just it just took off with painting itself um, I love the trade uh, I learned everything about it, uh, and from that point, um, my partner and I basically split up, and in 2000, I basically created Elite Painting Services. Um, I no longer did the little side gigs like, you know, carpentry work, moldings, mm -hmm plumbing, installing, you know, a faucet or, a, you know, anything like that. Yeah. Uh, we, I created the niche, or I learned the niche, had the niche for just painting itself. Um, and the painting's not painting. We talk about this all the time. Opening a can of paint, slapping some paint on a wall with a brush is, a lot, is not painting. You know, no. that's not, you know, the wall prep and everything before the paint is what makes the paint job. It's, and a it's, lot of people don't realize that that just just hiring a handyman to, to slap some paint on the wall it looks like someone slapped some paint on the wall it's oh, the, definitely, definitely it's the prep work that you do and, and also the neat and clean cleanliness i mean i've been in houses after the paint has been in there and the paint's dripping on the floor and the speckles all from rolling and you know everywhere you look there's paint on the you know they wash the brushes out in the driveway there's paint on the driveway i mean it's <laughs> the stuff that goes on and i've seen you know and in, in, uh, i've flipped houses before and i've dealt with some of that and also you know in the real estate world that we see this stuff um, there's a difference between someone who paints and a painter. Absolutely. And uh, that's where you, you know, that's where you are elite because uh, we see that as, um, you know, you get what you pay for in this world and, you know, just slapping paint on the wall, you know, hiring a guy from Home Depot to slap paint on the wall, it's not going to get the results that you're going to get when the walls are prepped properly and, and it's going to last and it's, the finish is going to last and when the kid's right on with crayons and you got to clean it, the paint's not going to come off the wall and all the stuff that we deal with in our lives. So, um, but that's where it's, you the, it's the back. knowledge too. I mean, yeah. uh, obviously, it's all experience, um, it's trials. You know that we had to learn, um, mm -hmm. and you know there's there was yeah. you know some crash courses, and you yeah. know we, we we learned from those mistakes, mm -hmm. and we became who we are today, which is elite. Um, you know, but eighty percent of our our work is prep work. So if you don't have that eighty mm -hmm. percent. You know, the twenty percent of painting is, is not going to be easy. Yeah. We've all seen it where the paint cracks later and shrinks and Absolutely. peels and all the other stuff because it wasn't prepped right. Right, but you not know. only that, it's it's also using the proper materials, mm. using you know, spending the extra dollar to to, you know, people want to just uh, save money on materials. Well, where can you cut corners? Well, look, are you looking to cut corners or you're looking to add value to your home. You know, that's what I I bring into the into the you know. It's the, the job. The real estate was is the biggest investment of your life. Most people, the most money, most equity they have in their life is their house. Absolutely. And you're gonna cut corners on it. Whether it comes to selling in real estate, whether it comes to repairs in your house, 
this is your number one investment in your life. Why would you treat it like that? You know, I say all the time, if you need heart surgery, you're not going to go out and find the cheapest heart surgeon. You're going to get the best heart surgeon. Absolutely. It's going to be the best <laughs> job, you know? So why would you nickel and dime the biggest investment of your life? You know, I see that a lot of times with attorneys. Oh, I get, I get a free attorney from work. This is the biggest investment of your life. You really want to rely on a free attorney? Or you want to deal with the experienced somebody, attorney somebody that's done this before, doing, yeah. that we know, love, and trust already that's in our circle. Um, and that's, you know, like I said, when I know when I send you to someone's house, I'm not going to get, yo, this guy dumped paint all over my rug, you know, because those are the phone calls you get. And, you, you know, you don't want to refer someone that, you know, is going to wreck a house. You want someone to go, Benny was awesome, thank you, and he's painting my next house. And yeah. that makes me say, okay, Benny's going to get the next one, too, you know. Yeah. And, you know, that's how we, listen, we try to leave people better than we found them. And um, that's uh, why you're excelling, obviously, because you've, you've really made yourself a league. I mean, your bands are nice. It's a whole... How you do one thing is how you do everything, and you've obviously figured that out. I mean, like I said, if you look at Benny's van, it's a class act. The way the guys dress with their clothes, it's a class act. Their equipment's a class act, and you know, it's the way they treat the job. They did a they did a house for me um, that uh, that co-op he did for me over in Rockville Center. I was like, oh, did you have the cleaning lady come in? And she goes, no, that's the way Benny left it. And I'm like, the floors were shiny, everything was nice. <laughs> I'm like, wow, this is this is awesome. So uh, that's no. one of my core core values, right? Yeah. Cleanliness. Uh, yeah. I, I just you know what it is is. It's just something about, you know, leaving a place better than when you came in. Yeah. Uh, giving that impression is a huge thing for me uh, that resonates with, a, with, a, with people. And that's what allows that referral to just keep going. Yeah. Um, and, and that's something about, you know, that's, that's how I build relationships with people. Yeah. It's just, a, you know, not, not like the initial no love and trust factor. Um, one of those one of those things is is you know you go in you introduce yourself you you are professional um, you tell them exactly what you're gonna do you're gonna detail them with a with an amazing estimate you know my estimates are big. usually yeah communication is big this is exactly what you're gonna get and this is what you're gonna expect you know I do that when I list the house this is problems that we may have and this is stuff as long as they know what they're expecting it just goes nice and smooth when you get, get caught by surprise like I don't know about that that's when you have the problem so right. That communication core value up there on the wall. Yeah. Benny's got his core values up here on the wall. Quality, respect, cleanliness, communication, professionalism, and accountability. And uh, we talk about core values a lot, and that's um, basically what is the most important things in your life, and stand by them in everything you do. And um, that's something new that you've brought to the table in the last year, I would say, right? Yeah, absolutely. And how has that changed your business, bringing core it's, values in? I mean, it it. it it changed me as a human being, um, but allowing me to be that leader and, you know, put the core values in the business has taken my business and the people that uh, work for us um, to another level. I mean, they, they, they treat me as a leader and I treat them not just as employees. They, they're my like team. The, yeah, I don't like the word employee. I feel like it's almost degrading. Like, we're a team. Like, you can't make a living without them and they can't make a living without you. Right. You need each other. You're a team. There's no one, you know, I'm the boss. I hate that. Oh, people, you know, say, oh, you're the boss. I don't, I'm not the boss. I'm going to call the team leader. I'm not the boss. Like, I don't like, I'm not the boss. Like, we're all in this together. We all need each other to make this, you know, to all feed our families. And um, I don't like that old school of, oh, you know, the, the boss is rich and he's, you know, driving that, a fancy car. Well, that car was, that was, that was, oh, my wrecking the place. That, that was my last meeting um, where I, I stood in front of the crew and, and I said to them, I said, look, everybody calls me boss man. You know, I don't want to be called boss man. Yeah, yeah. I want to be, you know, I want to be your leader. Yeah, I want yeah. to be yeah. the guy who's looking out for you at all times. The yeah. guy who's uh, putting his best interest into the work, quality work, quality um, uh, people that, that hire us, you yeah. know, people that line up with our core values. Yeah, yeah. Um, ideal clients. I mean, that's a huge thing for all of us, right? Yeah. Um, I, I stood in front of them and I said that to them. And I don't want to be called, I don't want to be called boss man. It's, yeah. you know. I know people still call me boss man, but yeah, but no, yeah, I know I feel the same way. I I, I feel kind of like awkward when people say that. And I don't like to say uh, one of my employees because it's just it's not just an employee. It's part of my family. This is my work family. Right. Yeah, you know, it's part of my team. You know, it's like, um, and I think that's part of the core values that comes in where you. Well, even with you know, my, you know, my secretary, right? It's mm -hmm. not my sec she's my assistant. Yeah. You know, yeah. at the at the end of the day, she's yeah. literally. I don't like the assistant. term secretary. Like, no, yeah. she's my assistant. Like, you know, she helps me. I help her. Whatever. You know, I, I like, you know, just the language of, and that's all I said, whole part of that core value process to make everything kind of just flow right and, and for, put everything in the right perspective, I think. Um, super important. And then you talked about leaving stuff better than when you found it. 
that's not just with work. That's a core value for life. You know, we talk about in our apex world, um, uh, represent what winning looks like every day, right? Like, if you're walking down the street and there's a garbage floating down the street, pick it up, put it in the garbage. Don't, don't let it blow away. Don't say it's for someone else. Shopping cart's blowing, it's going to hit someone's car. Take that shopping cart, put it back. Today I was driving down Caldwell Avenue and uh, there was a bull in the middle of the, of, the, uh, of, the, of the road and nobody pulled over to get it. Yeah. I just pulled right over. Yeah. I mean, that's just something that I do at all times. Yeah, but it's like, you know, conscious effort to say, hey, listen, I got a situation here. I can make this situation better. I always say, used to say with the farm all the time, someone, people come to the farm and say, oh, you guys should do something like that. Someone should do something like that. Someone should like, you know what? You are someone. Come down here and help it. Right. You know, like, you know, contribute. you ever catch yourself saying someone should do something about that, you point the finger back and say, okay, let me do something about right. that. Absolutely. Um, you know, because if you see a way that something could be better, Make it better. Don't wait for someone else to make it better. And you know, that comes to business and life and relationships and all that good stuff. You know, appreciate that. Um, so, um, <laughs> how long? Go on. It's funny. Uh, yes, it's it's nice to, uh, to be in person and uh, do this without uh, technology. You know, just face to face on Zoom. Um, face to face in person is 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 probably the best thing. Everyone hear us all right? Everything. Every it sound is great. Uh, you are the Godfather, Brian. I'm the Godfather, yeah. That's what Dawn says. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any pinky rings on. What's going on? Oh, jeez. <laughs> so, Brian, tell me a little bit about you and the real estate world. I mean, I gotta flip it back. All right. Uh, so, real estate world. Um, it's actually funny. Memories. Three years ago today, we were actually on a job together. That Benny was. Uh, I brought him in on and. Uh, it was over in Limbrook at the uh, Noble Street uh, co-ops over there. And, it was actually uh, first, it was Diane. On, yeah, it was through uh, Diane, who you Hendrickson. just finished uh, that. And, it was uh, on Hendrickson, and then we did Noble, yeah. and then we just yeah, finished. Yeah, and now you just did Diane's house again, which Correct. is pretty cool. Um, so, you know, when you do the right thing, obviously, it comes back to you. And a lot of my business already, so I've only been selling real estate. I've been in the real estate business for over 20 years, you know, flipping houses and investment properties and all kinds of stuff like that. But I only... Get, Started selling retail real estate about five years ago. Like my anniversary is coming up the end of April, five years. And in that process, we sold you know hundreds of houses. Got a team, uh, about a dozen agents. Um, Dawn being one of them on there. Yep. Um, Rockstar agent. Um, she's followed my lead, and I've taught her the business, and she's she's teaching me stuff now, which is a, which I love. Um, so uh, good when that, that other knowledge comes back. Yeah, there, right? yeah. You know, we, we feed each other. We're, we're not. We're all in this together. I say that all the time. You know, no one knows everything. Um, you know, talked about last Wednesday. I met um, Linda, um, nah, Linda, Maria Lynn, uh, Next Level Realty uh, broker owner, and theoretically she's my competition. And everyone asked, we went to this network group. Are you okay? You know, it's supposed to be like a one per industry type, you know, um, group. And you know, we said, you know, can she come down? I said, definitely. I said, because I can't sell all the houses and I can't list all the houses. I don't have all the buyers. On, you know, I said, we all need each other in the real estate world. And as soon as you figure that out in the real estate world, it, it's a game changer. So um, I actually met with Maria um, Sunday, uh, yesterday, and we got a $900,000 deal possibly coming together from a meeting Wednesday of a conversation that we had. So, um, that's how important the relationships are and how important it is just keep an open mind just be a good human and that uh abundance mentality you know if you have that scarcity mentality no don't let anyone of the realtors in the room me come in i want to talk to you because you have something i need right and i have something you need right so together we work together you might be sharing each other you know yeah something that you might not know yeah and she actually has a we might be doing two deals together um that came that spurred from a conversation at lunch at a networking event so, i mean that's how important it is to talk to people and, and build the relationships around us and Obviously, the same in your world as you're building relationships with your clients. That's your referral base. You know, you take care of. Uh, we did Diane's uh, parents' house, and we did her brother's house, and then it, you know it goes through the whole network. Um, you do the right thing for someone; they're going to refer you. And a lot of my business already is referral business. You know, I've, some people have sold them their first house, and they're already upgrading to their next house. Uh, some people are getting out of town. Um, you know, moving upstate. Um, I got a lady I met with um, Friday. They were from Brooklyn. They moved out to Baldwin, and they're driving from Baldwin to um, Brooklyn every day uh, for work. And the commute is absolutely killing them. And they only closed on the house. I think it was August, and they're already talking about selling. Problem in their case, though, is that rates were two and a half when they bought, and they're four now. That's a lot of buying power that they're losing. 
wow. um, which is kind of tough. But now, you know, now you got decisions to make. So I become a counselor on top of that. Um, you know, what should I do? Listen, I can tell them, listen, you know, I can't make, yeah. I can help you with the decision. I was like, but it's up to you, you know, whether you're going to sacrifice this house you have for probably a lesser house because you have less buying power. Closer to the city is going to be a little bit smaller house. As you get closer to the city, obviously prices go up, size, size of house goes down for the money. I was like, but on the other time, if you're going to get divorced and fight over it with your family, then what's the point of having a nice house? So, and these are conversations I have with real estate, and I'm sure you probably have similar conversations. You're like, well, you're more than just a, a contract, you're more than just a realtor, you know, we're people, people. And Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't just go into a house and I, I build a relationship when I go in a house. Yeah. When I feel that there's something, a vibe there, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm getting, you know, personal, not personal, but to, to the point that, you know, they're comfortable with me coming in and confident that I'm going to be the, their contractor and, and I'm going to be able to work with them. But I go above and beyond. You know, that's just me. Sell them. We've been on jobs together where someone come in and said, uh, I want to paint all this. And so you're selling a house. Why would you paint all that? Let's just paint this and this. Let's fix this up. Let's fix this up. Let's fix this up. I don't want to spend all your money. You don't need to. Right. You know, you're selling I, I'm, not, I'm not one to upsell anything. And we just did that recently. And it's like, you know, they were talking about painting the whole house. And it's like, let's not paint the whole house. Let's just paint the bad spots and get it cleaned up for you. Right. And save them some money in the process. Well, that that comes up you know, to a good, really good uh, question for you is, what do you look for when you're putting a house on the market? You know, anything, just like from contractor work to then finally the, the, I mean, the painting end of it. Really? I mean, just neat and clean. Neat and clean. Yeah. People want neat and clean. We were talking about the other day. When you walk into a house and it's got funky wall colors and funky wallpaper and funky rugs and cluttered all over, you're not looking at... So we don't buy structures. We buy a feeling. When you walk in a house, does this feel like home? Do I see myself sitting on a couch... Do I see my kids running through? Do I see us sitting at Thanksgiving with the table there? Maybe the Christmas trees in the window there. That's what you're buying that feeling of home. So when you walk in what's going to be your home, and now it's all funky, now your mind goes right from, is this home to, that's a disgusting color. You know, look at that water stain on the seal. And it's now all of a sudden you're not thinking home, you're thinking work. You're thinking, you know, what is this? Why there's so much stuff in here? And now you totally blew them off track. So if you come in a house and it's a blank slate and it's nice and clean and neat and neutral colors, smells fresh, you walk in a house, it smells like home. You know, it's nice and clean and fresh. And you know, a lot of times they talk about baking cookies. You know, I walk in and it smells like fresh baked cookies, you know, because yeah. it feels like home. That's the feeling you're getting. Uh, and of course, when I'm looking for that house, you know, when someone's coming to list for me, I go, get this thing clean. I say, you're moving. Get the cleaning ladies in. Let's get the paint work done. You know, if there's water stains. We got a, we got a house to work on together. It's got a water stain we got to fix. Um, got to do that stuff you know you got to put some money in to get top dollar out and and to make it so quick right and the neater the cleaner prettier smelling good also i talk about heating and cooling a lot of people in the winter they may keep the heat down because they want to save a couple dollars on on energy now when i walk in a house and it's cold outside it's 50 degrees inside it's cold inside that doesn't feel like home to me and now when it's if they like today it's 28 degrees out and i walk into a house at 70 degrees and i go wow this feels like home you know, it's little things like that, 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 you know, that, you know, it's all the senses that we're touching. Um, so you walk in, so now the colors are nice, they're pleasing to the eye, smells good, it's clean, you know, I could see myself living here, let's put an offer in. Right. Um, if you don't create that feeling, if it's full of clutter, and said your walls are painted orange, and you got shag carpets, and all this weird stuff that, um, you know, may have been trendy at the time, it turns people off. I mean, I've had people that say, oh, I don't want that house. I'm like, why not? That wallpaper is hideous. I'm like, you realize we can paint the walls, right? Yeah, I'm not really feeling it. Where the wallpaper literally kept them from selling their house, where if they would have peeled the wallpaper, had you come in and throw a neutral gray or tan on the wall, um, they probably would have sold the house to that person. They loved the house except for the wallpaper and yeah. literally were like turned off by the wallpaper so much. They're like, yeah, I'm not really feeling the vibe. You know, you know, it's, it's funny that so much wallpaper removal is happening right now for us. It's like constant. Yeah. So it's like wallpaper removal, skim coating. Wallpaper yeah. removal, skim yeah. coating. Yeah. You know, because even though wallpaper is coming back in, it's just the new, the newer style. You know that yeah. that's coming in, the trendier style. So, uh, you know, for me, uh, I'm not a big wallpaper guy. So maybe an accent wall would be cool with like the new trendy stuff. But when I'm going into people's homes and like, let's say like when you're referring to stuff, yeah, it's like, oh my god, what, <laughs> what, what are all that? The metallic one, that like shiny metallic yeah, wallpaper. Yeah. yeah, like what are we doing here? Like, you know, yeah. we have to pull this. Yeah. Um, but. You know, bringing value is, is huge, and basically, you know, when you refer me out, I try to sell them the same thing. 
I don't oversell. Mm -hmm. I don't need to oversell. Yeah. But neat and clean and also eyesore or, I, you know, things that somebody might say, well, why is there a leak up there? Or, you know, is there something wrong? Yeah. Oh, we put a new roof on three years ago. Those are old water stains. I don't care if it's old. You gotta, you gotta fix it. Yeah, you gotta. Because if someone walks in, they see water stains. They're gonna say this house is a piece of junk. Look at the, you know, well, all right, they, all right, it's got a new roof, but they don't realize that. They think, oh, there must be problems, you know. So right. you gotta fix the damage. You know, if you're gonna sell a house, you gotta put a little effort into it. Right. And a lot of times people don't want to do that, and they make my job harder. And they make, at the end of the day, you know, the engineer comes in, it comes on a punch list. Now they try and renegotiate. Oh, this house has water leaks. We want five thousand dollars off. It doesn't have water leaks, and now we gotta explain this and. Um, it's a problem. So rather than, you know, be uh, reactive, let's be proactive. Let's go in and I would say, look at your own house like you're buying it. Walk in and say, wow, you know what? Colors are rough. You know what? There's a big crack in this wall, you know, plastic crack. It happens. It settles. doesn't mean it's a bad house, but right. plastic cracks. It's old. Um, kids maybe ran a, you know, toy into the wall and there's a hole in the wall. And so you can't sell the house like that. You know, spend a couple hundred bucks, a couple grand, get the house right. And then we sell it. Um, again, because it's presentation is everything. And that goes right back to the image we talked about with your vans and your uniform. Presentation is everything. Well, people, first impressions are everything. And that, that saying is so true. People come across you and you're neat and clean. The trucks are neat and clean. And you're going to buy a house and the house is neat and clean. It just says something about the whole operation, about the house, about it was well taken care of. The people cared about this house. Um, and again, the people are attracted to that. And I think it's just everything in life is, is like that, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, the village in town and all the stores are well kept or you go to some villages and the sidewalks are all dirty and the stores have all crap in the window and, you know, it's just... You talk, that, about, talk about this village, right? Yeah. Can we yeah. give a shout out to somebody? Who we shout out? Uh, Kevin Brady. Kevin Brady. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kevin Brady. Um, Kevin Brady. Yeah. Him and his team. DPW Malvern is they, top notch. They, they, treat this, they treat this town like it's their own front lawn. They I mean, definitely, literally. definitely do. I mean... Not for nothing. I love Kevin Brady to death. Not not because he's got because like he every eight. color of his shirt yeah, of, yeah. A, uh, of a lead painting, no, but I'll give credit where credit is due. That those crews. I mean, when it snows, roads are clean. Um, you know, the, you look at the beds up here. All the all the uh, bulbs are going to start coming up. You're going to see all the flowers coming up. All the beds are not one weed in any bed. The lawns are perfect. I want them actually landscape my house because my house doesn't come out that nice. But uh, it's uh, shout out to Kevin Brady and the crew. Um, they do, you know, they really treat the town like it's theirs, and that's part of the Malvern family. We all treat it like it's our big, it's our house. Malvern's our house. Yep. And we treat it that is. way. Definitely is. Um, no, good stuff. So I just, uh, I just put out uh, any questions. If anybody had any questions, so um, we get back. We say how long Elite's been around? Uh, Elite? So we are in business uh, eleven years. Eleven years. That's Actually, no, we're going on twelve. Going on twelve years. Going on twelve dozen. Years. Nice. Yeah. That's uh, that's pretty impressive. A milestone. Yeah, it's a big, uh, big milestone these days, this day and age, and and you're building. And so we, you started. Um, so you've always been into this, you know, um, promotional stuff and self development. I think really took off. And I think I kind of dragged you in because we were going down that road when I joined Apex. It'll be last end of last April. You jumped in at the same time. So we've been in it now. What about ten months now? Yeah, we're about ten months in, eleven months are going on. Um, we've both been doing our self-development journeys, uh, and those of us that watch our journeys have seen, uh, probably seen changes, and hopefully have seen changes in us. And uh, you know, just trying to make the world a better place, make ourselves a better place, better people. Um, what is your biggest takeaway so far from your journey in the last ten or eleven months since uh, you got involved in Apex? Mindset. Yeah. Mindset has been like the biggest. I used to care about everything. Yeah. It's not like I don't care. Yeah. It's the little stuff that I don't sweat anymore yeah. because we have so many big things yeah. to accomplish in life. Um, you know, we used to talk about that stuff used to bother us. Don't. Yeah. You, you're, you're, way, you're giving it way too much attention. You're giving it way too much credit. And we've, we constantly, me and Benny talk pretty much every day and we constantly talk about things that are bothering us, things that we're working on, things we're striving for. Sometimes we got to, you know, kick each other in the ass when we need it. And, um, you know, uh, something I talked about, um, I had my podcast uh, with Mike came out, Crushing Your Fear podcast came out today. And I talked about on that, uh, not losing your joy. When you have a good mindset, and you have a positive mindset, and you're in your zone, and you're in your flow state, as Stacey Vasky would call it, shout out to Stacey. When you're in your flow state and everything's going right and you're doing good, don't let this stuff take you off track. It's just people biting your ankles. Like, stop. That's not going to affect me tomorrow. I don't care what someone has to say about me. I don't care about that. I have a goal, I have a focus, I'm doing the right thing, I know I'm doing the right thing. If you don't like what I'm doing, then don't watch. Right. 
you know, and we used to talk about going live and, you know, people will say something, people have a comment. You know what? You don't like me going live? Don't turn it on. You don't like my message? Don't turn it on. I don't care. I'm, I'm doing what I feel I need to do. I'm doing what people are asking from me. Uh, same to you. I mean, the feedback that I'm getting, I know you're getting too from, from people that follow us, the inspiration. I mean, I have people reaching out to me every day saying, thank you, I need that message today. Thank you for riding your bike. I'm out running today. I'm out riding my bike today because I saw you riding your bike. You know, uh, 75 hard. I had some lady stop me on the street while I was riding my bike two months ago. Like me down and goes, you're the guy that did 75 hard, right? And I'm like, yeah, why? She goes, I'm doing 75 hard right now. She goes, you turned me on to the program. It's awesome. I'm so so grateful for you. I don't even know who she is to this day. Like, it was just some, she saw me online on Facebook and the influence that we have on the world is is pretty wild. And that's how important it is to do our best to be our best because people are watching. Absolutely. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's, uh, I look at that every day. And listen, I'm not a saint by any means and you're not a saint by any means. You know, we've, We've all had our mistakes. We've all still make mistakes every day, and we all have our good days and our bad days. But you know, we try and just be the best we can every day. And uh, um, I know you you have a, a journey if you want to talk about that you're 14 months into a little bit, which um, I think is amazing. Um, I think a lot of us need to go down that road that you're on. Um, if you're cool talking about that, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm okay with it. Um, so I'm 13 and a half months, not one ounce of alcohol. I mean, that's, um, that's a feat. I did it for 75 days on 75 hard. And I don't know, once you get or past the initial hurdle of it, uh, it gets a little bit easier. But this, you know, right after 75 days, you're already on back having drinks again. And um, it definitely clouds your, clouds your space. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's been, a, it's been a, an amazing journey. Uh, whoever thought that I would, you know, stop drinking. I, it was just one of those, you know, networking things or going out or going to a wedding or whatever it was. Um, hanging out in the backyard and just drinking beers, uh, it's, it's weird not doing it now. Yeah. But the clarity is so much, much, it, yeah. it's just so much clearer. Um, I'm able to retain so much more information. Uh, I'm able to focus, you know, like I said before, mindset was a big thing for me. I was able to change my mind. And um, I'm here today. I mean, we're, you know, it's not that I, I'm not promote, you know, not that I don't, not that I look at alcohol as it's such a bad thing. It's bad if you abuse it. Yeah, it's like everything else, moderation. You know. It's so I felt that I needed to stop yeah. for certain reasons, and uh, I, I, I took it upon myself. No help from any programs. And at the time, it was like, you know, COVID, so mm -hmm. I, I wasn't going to do a Zoom AA meeting. Um uh, mm -hmm. So I, I took it upon myself and, you know, with, with that mindset change and then really thinking about it and, and doing it, I, I just became successful. Um, and it's the path and journey that I'm on. And uh, I've seen a huge promoted. difference in you in it. And I mean, it's obviously part of it is our, our apex uh, personal development journey. But um, I've definitely seen a difference in, in your character and how you represent yourself. And it's, it's, you're a different person now. I'm proud of you for Thank you. Doing it, man. That's a Thank big you. feat. I've, well, I'm going to give you kudos, yeah, too. I mean, yeah. 365 days riding your bike, and today yeah. today you gave me a call. I'm like, dude, it's 20 degrees outside. Yeah. I'm like, what are you it doing? Cold. It was cold today. And, and you were like, you used the Strava it. app, and for some reason, on the coldest days, it just shuts off. And I go check it, and it wasn't calculating for the last three miles. And I'm like, and I have to have 10 on there. It, it, was, it was telling you yeah. FYE, man. Yeah. Just, you got to go I back out. I had to out. keep going. So I probably <laughs> did about 15 today in the cold, because um, I have to. it has to say 10, like, and I've had... Every now and then, the app just shuts off, and then I'm like, well, "What happened? Like, it's cold today. I want to go in." And but, you know, we we don't make excuses. That's we, it. No. I ride until it says ten every day. No excuses. You know, I, I make a lot of uh, a lot of excuses because I just don't want to ride. He makes excuses. <laughs> I make excuses for other things. We all have our excuses that we make. Um, but, uh, I, I want to ride, but it's like, yeah. uh, Brian, I can't. You know, it's, uh, no, it, it was. It's been tough. This cold weather is tough. My my hands are still like arthritis from riding today um it's uh yeah it's tough on the body when it got real cold i started doing the uh, stationary bike because it was just it's just i was numb the whole day like literally it was like not good for i'm like this isn't good for productivity so when it got below 20 degrees i was uh riding stationary bike 10 miles but uh yeah for the most part i've been outside probably most of this journey uh out of the 301 days now i've probably been outside probably at least 275 of them something like that um that's nice. It's, I'm it's proud of you, me. Jesus. That's a that's yeah. a that's a huge accomplishment. I mean, I, I came up with this idea that I wanted to do something big and and accountability to myself in our development process, 
Um, I don't like going to the gym. If I'm lifting something up and picking it up, you know, picking something up and putting it down, I want to get paid for it, you know. <laughs> so, um, in my life, I've always been, a, you know, earlier in life, Dad said work hard so, you know, you can work smart later. So, he basically put me in all the rough jobs, the blue-collar jobs, you know, cleaning up, carrying stuff and all kinds of stuff so that I would go to school and not have to pick stuff up and put it down anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think we're working so, yeah, my head. Lesson, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was basically his goal was to, abuse me as a as a child you know beat this kid up make sure he learns that this isn't the way you want to work you want to go to school and you want to get a, a job where you don't have to work with your hands and don't have to beat up your body every day and uh it worked so um but in that in that journey there um i decided i want to do something something that meant something to me it was kind of a spin-off of 75 hard for me sort of like have a, a time frame commitment um i wanted to get up early and and do something every day, exercise. Um, I get my knees are beat up, and you know from football and wrestling, all that stupid stuff. Plus, I'm you know six four and was overweight a lot of my life, so uh, my joints are all beat up. So I can't run, I can't do stuff like that. I mean, I can, but it's just not pretty. It hurts too much. So I get on a bike though, and it's smooth. It's you know it doesn't it doesn't kill your joints. And I uh, started riding during COVID. I said, you know, I'm gonna try and commit to this. And I had some crazy idea that we're gonna commit to this 365 days and. I didn't know if I was gonna make it or not. I rode through COVID. I had COVID around Christmas. I was riding outside with COVID. Um, luckily, I didn't, didn't have a bad case of it, but- um, I think I walked with you when I had yeah, COVID. We walked together, <laughs> yeah. When I was doing a 75 hard phase two, uh, we walked together during COVID. Um, we do what we gotta do, you know? Um, and uh, it kept me accountable. Um, it helped me keep the weight off. They eat like an animal, I need to stop. Um, but the message of the days are actually the the biggest thing. So I started doing the message of the day. I was telling him, inspired by Mike Claudio. He started it and uh, he stopped, but I'm still going. Um, and when I first started doing it, it was kind of just like silly. Like, hey, here we are riding a bike. Then it sort of become meaningful. And now like literally I, you know, like try and really put some thought into what I'm saying. And some are better than others. And some, sometimes I think they're a crappy message and I'll listen to them back. I'm like, oh, actually it was pretty good. But, um, but then I get the, the, the direct messages. I needed that today. How does that, um, how does that you. help you in, in the real estate world? Um, how does that helps me, I don't know, know that I'm on the right path, that I'm doing the right thing and I'm inspiring people. Obviously, in life, everything's a popularity contest. The more, the more visible you are to people, the more people know, love, and trust you. When it comes time to need painting, it comes time to sell their house, uh, their friend to sell their house, their kids just got married, they need a house, uh, you know, grandma passed away, we need to sell grandma's house. You know, are you going to hire someone off the bus stop sign or are you going to hire someone that, you know, that they know what I'm about? If you, if you watch my Facebook, you know who I am. You know what I stand for. Um, and it's just who I am. And I put it out there. Um, a lot of times I've probably said too much in public and whatnot and been a little maybe more vulnerable than I should have been. But I think, you know, it's important to be real. It's important to talk about, um, you know, that, uh, you know, that you're, you know, 13 and a half months over and that you admitted that you had a problem and how much better your life has since. Um, I've obviously had my marital issues and separated from the wife and I own parts of that and I think it's important to talk about that that um, this is real life it's the real world and uh, we're not alone on an island in our own situation a lot of us are going through the same stuff and I think it's just nice to connect with people and say hey listen everything's gonna be alright if you need anything I'm here for you talk to me I'm an open book I tell everyone lean on me no judgment um, you know and try and keep it real yeah. you know try and you know that's how people Again, we build, we talk about people work with people they know, love, and trust. So we got to build that. And again, it's not a fake thing, it's a real thing. Right. This is who I am. If you like me, great. If you don't like me, that's fine too. Like, you know, we talk about our core values. If our clients don't have our core values, you know, and they want to cheat and they want to do whatever and hide, you know, if I got a client to say, like, you know, wants me to sell their house, but there's some major flaw of it and they're like trying to hide it, like, I can't do it. Like, I can't. Like, you know, and I've even had. More, more times than a buyer. A buyer will come in and they don't want a house. And I'm like, no, nah, it's not the house for you. And they're like, what do you mean? And I'm like, no, there's too many issues with that house. It's right. not. It's know. just going to hit you in the ass. Yeah. Back and and I'm like, and then the next house we find is usually the next better house. And they're like, see, this is why we passed on this yeah, house. You, this you is the wait. one for you. Right. And I say, you know, when it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And I've gotten so much respect for that, that I'm not pushing people to buy houses. Because... I need to sleep at night. When I used to flip houses, everyone's like, why do you do make them so nice? I was like, I make them the way I live in them because I need to sleep at night. I need to know if someone's in there with their family that that house is as See? good as something I would live in. You know, I'm not cutting corners. I'm not hiding stuff behind walls. 
And unfortunately, in the flip world, a lot of people do hide stuff behind walls and, you know, some flip houses that, you know, that I've actually sold the flip houses that you hear a year or two later, like, oh, yeah, there was a splice behind a wall that uh, was shorted out. We had opened the wall up, and it's like, and it's like, why do guys do this, you know? It's funny. The same, the, the same thing happens for us. Is like, can you patch that up? I'm like, no, there's live wires in yeah. there. Well, you could just put a piece of sheet right. No, no <laughs> yeah. it just doesn't work like yeah. that. Just to do the right thing. But you, you know? get guys out there that, well, what are they going to do? Sure, they just going to put a patch yeah. on it yeah. and then yeah. let it go, you know, and... And you gotta on. be able to sleep at night, you know, and that that's not up to code. That's not the right that, thing to but, do. But that's yeah. something about me, though. Like, yeah. I need to sleep too. Yeah. Because if I close that up, and God forbid, I I, I find out that something just yeah, happened. The fire or so short or something. You know, who's like, who's yeah. gonna Who's gonna be held responsible? Yeah. Me. Yeah, exactly. So. The customer's gonna be like, "Well, he just did it." Yeah. Well, ma'am, you told me to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, but I don't. They I say no. That. Yeah. They want to know that. But mm -hmm. I, I, you know, like, I, I just want to let the people know, like. When it comes to painting and real estate, what kind of value can we bring to customers? Or what, what kind of value are we bringing to the customer when, when it's time for sale? Um, like I said, getting that house ready to sell is so important. If you're thinking about selling, um, I'm happy to come look at your house, no pressure. I'll look and I'll walk through. Now, I used to flip houses, so I, I used to create houses for people to buy. So I basically built the house to sell. Um, and in working with uh, customers all the time, I know what people are looking for. I know, you know, the things that are hot right now, the, you know, the colors that are hot right now. Um, you know, we know what people are looking for. So if you're thinking of selling your house at no charge for Benny to and me, we will be happy to come look at your house and give you some pointers on what to do. Obviously, if something needs to be painted, you know, Benny would prefer to use him, but I'm sure Benny's happy to give advice, um, just as I am. You know, of course, if I go look at your house and give you <laughs> suggestions on how to make your house better to sell it, of course, I'd hope you list with me. But at the same time, I'm here to help. We're both here to help. Um, if we can help you guys in any way, um, always reach out. And that, then that goes for whether it be real estate, whether it be life. Uh, obviously, if you're struggling with alcohol, I'm sure Benny's happy to talk to you. Um, I should talk to you now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, you, 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 I, I'm going to add to that, too. Um, forget about the alcohol part of it. Uh, I definitely will help you out. Just DM me. I'm, I'm more than happy to help anybody. And if you out. need referrals too for other people, I mean, we have plumbers, electricians, and architects, and all different people that we work with, attorneys, and home inspectors, and we have mortgage people. We have a whole network of people that we know, love, and trust. That if we're going to refer someone to you, you got to know that they have our values. Because if they burn us once, they're off. It's over. It's over. So the people that we work, that we're going to refer to you, We've already vetted. We it's people we use ourselves, and I, I say it's so important. When you hire a real estate agent, and you try and use all your own people, like stop. This person that you're hiring, whether it be me or someone else, this person has a mortgage person that they know, love, and trust. Usually two or three that we work with that they will get the deal done no matter what. If this person says they're going to make the house close, it's going to close. Whereas someone that and we have relationships with them, and they will jump through hoops for us to make the house close because they want our next referral. So someone I don't know isn't working for the next referral. They're not going to jump through hoops for me. I'm not going to have their cell phone. I'm not going to be able to call them at 10 o'clock at night and say, hey, fix this. Um, and that goes for my title people, you know, my mortgage people, attorneys. Attorneys are big. I mean, attorney will make, can make or break a deal. If attorney misses something, you could be in a, you know, it could cost you a lot of money. Uh, home inspector, same thing. You know? Chris, Christopher yeah. Lyons. It's a nightmare getting a house ready for sale. <laughs> uh, shout out to Chris. Uh, uh, you know, I'm going to add to that, um, you know, not getting a job. Let's let's say, for instance, I bid a house and I might be a little bit more expensive than somebody else and they, they go with somebody else. I always, always throw this in my email when I respond back to them. I say, if you ever need me for any type of question, if, if you're not, like, you're not sure if that, co uh, if that contract is doing the right thing for you, please reach out. There's no charge. Yeah. Just call me. I'm not right, looking right. to sell you something. Yeah. Just call me. Yeah, I will just, help you through the, the right process. Thing, yeah. Just right. the right thing. Yeah. If if somebody's putting up, you know, like not priming something, if they spackled something, not priming, and then they're just they're just painting over the spackle work, you know, obviously you're gonna see the pock marks and everything else that goes with that. You need to seal that. Yeah. You know, and you need to double coat. You see it all the time. The wall's shiny, and it's flat, and it's shiny, it's right. flat. So, so you I paint mean, right over the spackle with no primer. Right. So you, yeah. I mean, that's the bonding part yeah. of it, and and then 
to, to blend it all together. That's, yeah. you know, the, 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 the right steps, the right process to do it. Um, but, you know, I think I, I was reading a, um, something on Zillow, something about bringing the house value up. If you, uh, you're looking to sell a house and you're um, painting it and you're, you're using, uh, I'm going to throw a Revia Pewter because that's the first thing that comes in my mind. Um, that is a popular color. It's one of my favorite colors. Uh, it's a it's a gray and a, a and a beige together, so it's a grayish color. Mm. Um, they hot spring stones. That was my flip color. Every yeah. house was hot spring stones. I think we we flip we flipped that color into something else, right? Yeah. On, on Diane's house. Yeah. Uh, but what is, I, I, mean, I was reading the value is like forty five hundred to five thousand dollars that you can actually add minimal minimal. You know, to 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 the to yeah minimal. To oh, it depends on how funky it was before. Right. But if you had a funky color house and, and cracks in the walls and, and you know and just dirty, dingy, um, you know, and, and Diane's uh, parents' house. I mean, that house was it probably hadn't been touched in 30, 40 years, I would think. You know, elderly, obviously, you know, um, they weren't in a position to clean the house up. But then when the time came, you saw that the house was 30, 40 years old, hadn't been painted, and, the, you know, dirt on the walls and, you know, that type of stuff. And then when you painted, I mean, that was like... A, Night and day. Talk about it. Well, the floor, the flooring, and the flooring and the paint. I mean, you had to add fifty grand to the house, price of that house Absolutely. just by doing the flooring and the, and the paint. I mean, that house was beautiful. When I first walked in, it was kind of like, wow, this thing's kind of dark and dingy. And then we walked in, you know, after you were done, and I was like, wow, yes, I'm happy to sell this one. Yeah. And it went right away. And um, that house was actually funny. So, talk about knowing your craft, right? So, like Benny, um, I flipped houses. I'm an HVAC contractor. I grew up. I built my own house. I've been around all the trades. When I flipped houses, I did all the work myself. I did the electric plumbing. I did the painting. I did the, uh, and it wasn't an elite. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, so I've done everything. So we had a home inspector in that house that came in and told on the report that it had aluminum wiring. The whole house needed to be rewired. It was going to cost 15 grand. And the people wanted 15 grand off the price of the house. And I said, when was this house built? And the house was built in the 30s or something like that. I was like, they didn't have aluminum wire back in the 30s. So, hold on a second. So, I pulled the panel cover off the panel box and I started looking at the wire. It was copper wire that they had tinned. Back in the day, they would tin the wire. So, there'd be a silver tin coating over the copper. And I scratched it and I go, that's copper. I was like, there's no aluminum wire in this house. Goes, what are you, out of your mind? So, I called the inspector. He goes, no, it's aluminum wire. So, I called the, the buyer's idol listing. The buyer's agent, I'm like, listen, it's copper wire. Oh, no, the guy said it's aluminum. He says, well... Come down here, I'll show you. It's copper. As if you want to have a real electrician come in. And they actually brought an electrician in and told me, yeah, it's copper. There's nothing wrong with it. It was a brand new panel. It was a brand new service in the house. And But I saved them 15 grand because they wanted 15 grand off the top of the house. They were like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? And I'm like, something's not right here. Like, that house is too old to have aluminum wire. And knowing your craft. And that's stuff where people say oh you know people think oh it's a real estate oh this market's easy you just throw a house for sale and it sells no 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 i can deal with the building department because there's open permits or there's illegal uh, gas conversions or there's illegal decks or there's illegal whatever we got to deal with the building department we have title issues that come back where um the property lines have the neighbor's fence on it and stuff and we got to deal with those issues um i got to deal with the i got to make sure that the mortgage company is legit and that the pre-approval is right and i call the mortgage company um, I got to deal with attorneys who are trying to throw their weight around, and, and I got to straighten that stuff out. Then uh, home inspectors that some, you know, know what they're doing or not. Um, appraisers, some appraisers don't know what they're doing, and, you know, we got to say, all right, this is why this house is more valuable than the one that you're trying to compare it to. Um, and then we get that right down to the final walkthrough at closing, and then there's stuff that's done or not done in the house. There's a water leak that showed up. It's not done. And at the closing, and then at the closing, sometimes negotiation at the closing table where they come to the table short and whatever. And the, the, the real estate process, it's not just putting a house on, you know, putting a sale sign in the front window and selling it. That's the easy part. All the other stuff is where you could get hurt bad. $15,000. I'm so you know, glad that I don't have to deal with that. <laughs> it's a headache. And, you know, the building apartment's a nightmare. Um, you know, that's, it's this new thing. I guess they figure they can make money or whatever. I'm not really sure, but they've really gotten crazy uh, in every town. And that's an issue. Um, and a lot of people have done work through the years. And, you know, permits weren't really a big thing back in the day. And now, all of a sudden, they are a big thing. Yep. And they try and get everyone up to code from stuff from 50 years ago at the closing. And um, it's a problem. And if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get burned. And you don't know who to talk to. And you don't know who the people are to get in, the architect to get in, to get the plans done, get everything filed, the expediters. 
And that's where our value really comes in um, to keep you out of trouble and to keep you to get the most money in your pocket, not get hit with a $15,000 bill at the home inspection. Um, and it just comes back to you, same thing, you know. If you go in the house and spill uh, paint on someone's fancy furniture or fancy rugs or floors or, or front steps or drop the, you know, uh, can of paint down to brand new pavers, I mean, that's stuff that goes on in, in some of these worlds. What do you think, it hasn't happened? No, but it does, but you'll it's, make it it's right. It's happened, yeah, I mean. But accidents happen, accidents I've, I've happen. I've had, but, you know, like the, yeah. a five gallon bucket just spill out and somebody's, you know, just open up the side door and you're like, oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get the hose try, out, yeah. you know, try to get it. Yeah, but you make it right, you do what you can. Um, but that, that's, that's, you know, that, that's, that's, a, just, that's just, that's just us, norm, but, yeah. you know, like with all the guys that work for us, it's just, everybody is trained the same way. We're, we're all about being professional. Do it right or don't and do it. Yeah, do it, do it the right way and, you know. It makes me crazy all the time. I've seen it where someone have a painting contract room and they wash the brushes at the hose in the driveway and there's all paint on the driveway around where it's they wash the leave, brushes. It's only going to leave the white residue. I'm like, really? Come on, guys. Like, and I could see it. I was like, oh, the paint is just painted. Look, look, there's a little painting mess all around the driveway where they dump, where they dump the, uh, the water out in the backyard. There's a white spot in the backyard where they you know, dump the, you know. Kevin, how many know. shirts do you need? <laughs> how many shirts do you need? Can you please respond? <laughs> <laughs> We're still waiting for our DPW shirts, by yeah, the way. Yeah, where's, where's our safety shirts? <laughs> so, um, we are a little bit over 45 minutes. Yeah, we're coming up on time now, but I uh, hope uh, you guys gave you some value in the uh, real estate and painting world and just general uh, house maintenance. Um, we're trying to get into it. I think so. We got a visitor, so we're going to close this up. Um, we appreciate you guys from watching. Um, you can catch these episodes on YouTube uh, under Brian Lewis Realtor. And if anyone grab that, and I'll we'll close up. Penny, thank you for coming on. No problem. Thank um, you for having me. One second. Penny's just answering the door here. We got a visitor. <laughs> oh, this guy. Yes. You want to talk oh. about me, but you're inviting me. Let's go. That's you're it. live. You're on All live. Right. We didn't know who it was. And he's got the sweatshirt on. Look at oh, him. Look at this. Look at this Elite guy. Represent. The best. The bet is oh, the, is you gotta move in there. You gotta yeah, move in get there. Get in close, get in close. Yeah, can you see him? It's a delay. It's right now, it's a delay, but. Yeah, that's it. Right there. There you are. The biggest, biggest promoter of elite painting. <laughs> but I have to say, the best, best DPW. Nah, it's not me. It's all the guys, too. It's, it's no. them? It's them. I'm just a leader. Well, we, just like we just had this conversation. I know, I heard. Yeah. I saw a comment about me. I said, you guys didn't even invite me. It's okay. <laughs> That's it. It's like quick, got dressed and so came guys, back. This is, uh, we were talking earlier about Kevin Brady. You uh, gotta get in the camera, The man. leader of Mount Brady DPW. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. This is the second show. We can save this for next week. We could. Sport and everything elite. Everything's elite, yeah. This guy. We got the elite gear. So, 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 he's got like, Six to seven different colors. So every time he spots the van, he shoots me a, a, a picture. Like, so that, that's all the competition the that's Hashtag going on. Out there. If you take a picture of uh, Benny's crew in action, and hopefully they're not sleeping in a van, you take a picture. <laughs> you get extra points if you get a picture of the guy sleeping in a van. No, they don't sleep in a van. But uh, if you get a picture of Benny's van on location, uh, take a selfie with it, throw it up on uh, on Instagram or Facebook. Hashtag Malvern and Elite Painting, and Benny will personally deliver to you uh, an Elite T-shirt. And uh, Kevin's got a pretty good collection because he happens to work in Malvern, and Benny works in Malvern a lot. So, and of course, uh, we tell each other when we see the fans, so we can double up. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I got one over here. <laughs> so, uh, but it's a good promotion. That's obviously a great promotion for you. It's fun. We get to have fun with it, and uh, obviously, see how much work you guys do in the area. Um, we're still waiting for our DPW shirts, but uh, we'll see. I took a picture with his truck. You know, picture of the golf truck. <laughs> <laughs> Are we getting them? We got we need Maybe. shirts. We need shirts. Well, we got to we got to we got to talk to Corbett. But um, <laughs> <laughs> so, what can you add to the conversation about being a leader? Uh, I don't know. It's it's a team that you have behind it's you. It's a team. You're only as good as your team. Yeah, There's no I in team. No, no. You can't do the job without them. They can't do the job without you. It's, yeah, exactly. You know, it's, exactly. We all need each other. Dawn says she wants a shirt. Dawn wants a shirt. Don't want the DPW shirt. <laughs> <laughs> we got to start the DPW trend now. Yeah, yeah. So you want to close this one out? Close this one out, yes. Gav, thanks for joining us. I'm going to get you on a show on your own, I think. Yeah. Yeah, this is good. This is good. Be fun. Good interview, yeah. Good seeing you guys. Yeah, Same definitely. Here.
Thanks, Ready? Thanks, thanks for, for coming on. Like, what the hell's knocking on the door? Yeah, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm like, what? Damn, I'm trying to go sound. live. I'm trying to go live here. Go live here right now. I know it's the background, stuff. that's why. Yeah. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. All right, so, Benny, thank you for coming on. Uh, for the, no problem, man. He was the thanks first for, one on, and now we're doing thanks, a repeat. And thanks for having it at the Elite Compound. This is at the Elite Compound. Yeah, yeah. Kev, thanks for stopping by. That's awesome. Again, it was my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Like great you said, thank you for uh, all that you do. And uh, you've been joining our... Uh, our self-development journey, too, I see with some positive posts you have to make it out there. I like it. I like yeah, it. You know. you know what? It's better to be positive than negative, right? Can't be negative. Life's Can't too short. Negative. Life's too short. Life's too short. You know, we've all been through going. some crap in our lives, and it's a lot better to, to be uh, positive and, and keep looking at the good thing. Glass is half full. That's right. So that's it. Keep that glass half full. Absolutely. Not with alcohol, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everyone. We're signing off. Appreciate you all. Tune in next week for another episode of... Uh, Fire Starts Fire, and again, all these episodes are on YouTube under Brian Lewis Realtor. Go check them out. Subscribe and like. That's it. Later. Jump in, yeah. jump in, jump in. <laughs> all right, let's stop this thing here. All right, all right. How do you stop this thing here? Can't get to it. Finish.